In the latest version of Unreal Engine, version 5.1, and in all upcoming future versions, they have changed the way that we add controls to our game. Before, you used to go to Edit and Project Settings. Then if you scroll down and look for Input, we could add some controls to our game by adding some action or axis mappings. But as of the latest version, they've depreciated this system. So let's go over how we'd add some controls in the new version. If I just close this, and I'm in the third person template, head over to where your player blueprint is and open it up. In event begin play, you should see that we create this new add mapping context. Once you're here, just click the little search icon and it should take you to this input mapping context. This basically contains a list of all the controls for our game. If I double click and open this up and just click this little mappings button, we can see that we have a control for jumping, moving and looking. And if I click this little um, arrow here, I can press spacebar, gamepad or the touch one to activate the jump button inside of my game. If I wanted to add a new control to my game, for example, if my player character was to crouch or interact with an object, what we can do is add a new mapping to this. To do that, we first need to close this and then go to the actions folder and just right click and go input and select input action. And I'm just gonna call this input action underscore interact. Then if I double click and head inside here, we can configure the settings that we want this input action to have. So let's go over the main ones that you're probably gonna use. The first one is consume input, and this basically gives priority to whatever button is assigned to this key. So if I made it so that when I press the B button, it does the input interaction event, the B key, if I tried to use the B key for anything else, it's not gonna really work because I've already assigned it to this button. So if you check the consume input, that's what that's gonna mean. The trigger on pause basically allows you to execute the button even if the game is paused. And then I've not really used the reverse all mappings. Next, we have the value type. If you just click this little um, drop down, there are three main value types that I've used, the digital ball, the axis 1D, and the axis 2D. I'm gonna go over how basically to use them and kind of what each of them does. So the first one, the digital ball, basically is helpful for letting you know if a button has been pressed or released. So with this, just click save, close this, and then if we go back to our IMC default, which has a list of all the mappings inside of our game, and just go add new action mapping. And here we can select the interact that we just made. For the button, I'm gonna make it so that when I press the B button, it will trigger the interact event. And just make sure that the value type is digital ball. Then if I head inside my third person character and in some free space, if I just right click and look for interact, and I want this one, enhanced action events, interact. Because I made this value type digital ball, here under the action value, it's a Boolean variable, and we can basically see when this button is pressed. So if I just drag off triggered, this will fire whenever I press the button and look for basically print string and connect this into here and just go compile and I'll close this and go play. When I press the B button, on my keyboard, it's basically going to print string true because my finger is on the B button. So you can basically use the digital ball to let you know whether a button is being pressed or released. Whilst we're here, let's go over some of the other um, settings that you may use inside of here. The way the started button will work is it will fire once whenever you start pressing the button. I've not figured out what the ongoing or how the cancelled button fire. But once you finish um, pressing the button, the completed node will fire. And those are kind of the main um, uses that I've seen of the button so far. And you can also just click this little drop down here and you can see how long you've been pressing the button for. So if I just hook this up here and I'll just delete this node here. I'll compile this, close this and then go play and then press the D button. It's gonna let me know how long I have been pressing down this button for. So this can be helpful if you wanna, for example, make it so the player has to press down the button for a certain amount of time before anything happens. But we can just close this and delete this for now. The other value type that I wanted to show is the Axis 2D. It works very similar to the Axis 1D, but I'm just gonna show the Axis 2D for now. So if I just select this, I'll go save, 
and go back to my third person character. We're going to see the action value is now this blue thing. If I just right click on this and go split structure pin, it's going to have an action value for the X and an action value for the Y. This is actually the same thing that our movement input does. So I'm going to basically go over how to set up and have a value in the X and the Y. The 1D is exactly the same as the um, vector 2D, except there's only one of them. So to set up a value in the X, if I just drag off the triggered and look for print string and hook up X to here, I'll compile, close this and go play. If I press B, the value is gonna be one. If I ever wanted this value to be a negative value, if I open up my IMC default, what we can do is go to modifiers and if I just go add element, and in here, if I look for neg negate this one, and just go save. If I go play and press the V button, this value is gonna be negative one. So I've seen this been used in the movement input. Basically, when the player presses the A button, they um, negate the value so that they move in the opposite direction. And when they press the D button, they don't do anything to it, so the player positively moves forward in that direction. In order to have a value in the Y, if I just delete this and then hook up Y to here and go compile, close this, play, and then press the B button, the value is gonna be zero. But if I ever wanted this to have a positive value or a negative value, what I'd need to do is go back to my IMC default. And for my interact, if I just go add new control binding and let's select C, And if I just go to modifiers and I look for swizzle input access value and just go save. Now, if I go play, when I press the C button, this is gonna have a value. So if you ever want something to affect the Y value, make sure to put the swizzle input access value. It seems that we can put modifiers either here or in the button itself here. And then there's one more thing that triggers. So I've not really gone through triggers, but there's one trigger that um, I've figured out how to use. So if I go add element, there are a bunch of different triggers, but the one I've seen is hold. So if I just select this, and then if I select the index, there are a bunch of different settings. But currently what this hold button means is I'm gonna have to hold down this key for one second before it's triggered and fired. So if I just compile, close this and go play, and I press C, I have to wait for one second before that print string starts appearing. So that can be helpful if you wanna, for example, make the player hold down the button before something happens. And it seems that there are a bunch of other um, triggers and modifiers. I'm not gonna go through all of them as I don't even know what they all are right now, but hopefully those are all the main ones that you're probably gonna have to use. And with that, I hope you have a better understanding of how to use Unreal Engine's new enhanced input action system. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.